Welcome to another episode of Prior Power Principles. We hope that you were blessed from, you know, throughout the week and that you're ready to engage in another series with us. So now we are at episode nine and our topic today is prevailing prior. It is wonderful. We're going to share our testimonies as usual, and then we're going to get into the prior power principles of prevailing prior, and then we're going to be um, doing our closing part. So today's prior focus, um, Elder David will be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'll be focusing on diet and praying for, for our people, our Seventh-day Adventists especially, you know, to be drawn back to diet and lifestyle change and just following God's eight laws of health. But before we continue, we're going to ask Elder David to do our opening prior today. All right, let's yeah. bow our heads. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come to you and we just want to praise your name and thank you that you have delivered us from bondage through the death of your son. Yes. Thank you that you have redeemed us and brought us into the family of God. Those who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, our faith is not looking to ourselves today. We're not examining how we feel if we feel saved or if we feel good, we are looking to Jesus and the cross of Jesus and we're accepting what he did for us. We're accepting his righteousness instead of our unrighteousness. We acknowledge our need of a transformation thorough and complete. And we're looking to Jesus because he promised that he would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so, Father, I'm asking that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that you would, <clears throat> that you would open our heart to receive exactly what Jesus wants to give us today. And Father, for Gabrielle and myself, I'm asking <clears throat> for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit to make Jesus living and real. And that we would come under conviction of what Jesus wants to do to transform us wholly and completely from the inside out. And to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We, and, and to show us the, our place to cooperate with him in all things. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So I'm going to start by sharing my little testimony. So... Um, but before I wanted to ask Elder David, how was your week? <laughs> it was good. It was good. You got some gardening done? Yes, I did. Yes, it was good. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah, so I'm going to be sharing, um, you know, about, you know, God is interested in the little things. You know, I went to a camp meeting um, last, last week and, you know, towards the end of the camp meeting, we were just there and we went to visit Noah's Ark, which is fascinating. It's a life-size, um, you know, ark, Noah's Ark. And you can go in the inside. It has like three decks, you know, like three floors. You go up, you see everything inside there. It's really wonderful. So we came back to, um, you know, Red River Outpost. That's in Stanton, Stanton, Kentucky, where the camp meeting was held. And we were planning to return home, you know, return the, the Sunday but we ended up spending, because it was late, we ended up spending an extra day. So in the night, we stopped by the, you know, the house where all the staff, they stay. And they were just at the back, you know, celebrating like, you know, 4th of July and having like a social interaction. So we stopped by on our way before moving to our tent. And when it was almost like it got dark. And then we realized that most people had gone home on Sunday and our tent was still there. And we're like, it's lonely and it's dark down there. And we're like, no. So I just, I spoke to my friend, Joe Neal, that we, you know, we went together and I said, you know, we have to pull the tent down and take it down here. But who are we going to ask at this time? Most people are already dispersed. So luckily, you know, I mean, God just worked it out that she was talking to um, one brother, uh, brother Francis, and they were just talking about, you know, like moving out of the, the cities into the country and country life and all of that thing. And then 
he just heard that we wanted to pull it and he's like okay i can get my son and we go and pull it down and i was like praise god thank you jesus <laughs> and you know i was like looking at it and i'm saying but i said to joni you see god cares about the tiny smallest things so if you are going through a situation or you just want to make a decision just know that God cares about the tiny things. And I remember saying to Johnny, even it, if it is 0 0.003 millimeter, God cares that much about the tiny things in your life. So be encouraged and be courageous. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about prevailing prayer. And uh, the Lord reminded me of a time where I had been involved in, in ministry and uh, leading people to Jesus and uh, revival was taking place as, as uh, we were learning how to come into the presence of God and learning how to hear his voice, learning how to connect with Jesus uh, in the heavenly sanctuary to come boldly before the throne of grace. And, and then uh, I ended, that was while I was uh, going to college. And then when, when we left, I took a job doing construction and here I was on a crew and they had their music playing all day. And, and it was music, you know, music used to be my life before Christ. Uh, music was everything. I was into the popular music and it wasn't good, but it, it was, uh, here I was listening to it again because I was around all these other people. And, and I remember one day I'm coming to work, and I, and I just have the sense that my, my Christian experience, my connection with Jesus is just, is just lost. And, and I feel like I'm just drifting away. And, and the things of the world and the music, and the, it's, it's like that music just brings you back into your old mindset, brings mm -hmm. back those old thoughts and feelings and emotions and all the memories that come with each song has a memory with it, you know, that that connects you to your life in the past that wasn't a life with Christ. And I just uh, cried out to God. I'm driving to work and I'm crying out to God and saying, Lord, if you don't, if you don't deliver me, Lord, I'm just slipping away and I don't want to lose Jesus. I don't want to lose that intimacy and connection with him that I used to have. And it's interesting what the Lord does because I got to work that day. And I, I start working and we're working, we're building a log house, log cabin like, mm -hmm. and it's in the, up in the foothills of the Sierras out in California. And it's, it, this is a single lady that, that worked there. She was uh, maybe mid forties or 50, somewhere in there. And um, she had been divorced and separated for about 10 years. So she came in and she was talking with me and she started telling me a story. And the story went like this. She says she, she worked at San Francisco airport and she, uh, there was a guy at work that kept just coming on to her and telling her how beautiful she was and always being attracted to her. And it was flattering to her, but she, then she says, well, but he's married. He's got a wife and family. And it's like this fear came over my heart. It's like, oh no, you know, that's that's one thing I, I despise about some men. <laughs> that uh, they just, well, it's just so inappropriate, you know, it's just so wrong. And they take advantage of women. They use their vulnerabilities against them and and try to have their way and it's just it infuriates me so here i'm listening to the story and she said well he he told me he was he had to go to mexico for a, a vacation and he invited me along and my heart is pounding in my throat and it's like no we can't do that you know and and so it may the way she was telling the story made it sound like it was in the future and she, then she said well that was that was last week and we went to mexico together and i told him i said no physical relations you know I, i'll go with you but no physical relations well from, from two people who have been married one who is married and one who's passed the likelihood of that happening is 
small, right? So she's telling me this story and, and she said, uh, it, everything went fine until the last day and then things got out of control. And she said, suddenly it was like a flash of light when things were just getting out of control. And she set up and she said, we can't do this. And she said, she, she saw his family, she saw his wife, picture of his wife and a picture of his children in her mind. She set up and she says, we can't do this. You're a married man. This has to end. And, and so it ended. And I said, praise God. Oh, he delivered you. He, I said, you just can't open that door. Once that door is open, a flood comes in and, and it goes, it takes you to a dark place. And she says, yeah, I know. I know. She, she was a good Catholic person, you know, and she wanted to do what was right. And she, uh, and so I said, you need to call this off and make it, make it absolutely clear that this will never happen again. And she says, I know I need, I need to do that. So it, it was, uh, so what happened is the Lord just put a burden on my heart to pray for this lady because I knew she was being tempted. She was being pressured. She was being pushed. And the Lord just, you know, I don't know if you know when the, when the uh, burden of the Holy Spirit comes over you to pray for somebody, it's just intense. It's like, you must pray. You must bring them before me. You must ask for the angel of the Lord to encompass them. And so I started interceding for her. I started praying. I said, Lord, you've got to deliver her from this, from the attack, from the uh, attempts of this man. And I just asked that you would push back his influence and that you would give her strength. Well, it was a couple of, it was a week or so later um, that she said, she said, he wants to come see my new house. And so I said, Boy, don't let that happen. You know, don't, don't, if you ever get together with them again, the Lord spared you that one time. But if you put yourself in that situation again, it's likely to override what the Lord wants to, to protect, to protect you from. So the Lord put that spirit of prayer upon me. And I began to intercede that the Lord would stop this man from coming to her house because I know what he wanted to do. And so Several times that day, over and over and over, the Lord would bring back to me this, the, this situation, and I would pray and intercede for it and ask that the Lord would stop that man. The angel of the Lord would put up a resistance to him and stop him from coming. And finally, after three or four times of praying and just with a real burden of prayer, I had this peace that the Lord says, I got this. And in my mind, I could see him having a wreck. I could see him having some, something would stop him from coming uh, to, to see her so that nothing bad would happen. Mm -hmm. So I just had that assurance. And so I went home. And, and when I got back in the morning, I arrived at work and there was a new car in the driveway. And I go, oh, no, Lord, what happened? I had assurance. You gave me assurance that you had this. And I, so with a sad heart, I went in and started to work. And it was later on in the morning, she came walking into the house and she says, she looks at me and she has this funny smile on her face. And I didn't know if that was good or bad. <laughs> and, and I just remember saying, Lord, please. She says, you would not believe what happened last night she said he got here and he took me out to one of the finest restaurants we had a nice meal she said we were just leaving the restaurant and and he uh excused himself and ran to the restroom he says he got deathly sick and he has been hugging the toilet all night long and nothing happened <laughs> I said, Lord, you are so good to, to stop this. His plans were not of the Lord. They were not good. Mm -hmm. And the Lord intervened and interfered. And so the point that I'm saying is this. First of all, I was into a place where I felt like I was losing my connection with Christ. I was feeling my desperate need of revival and reformation. And when I cried out to the Lord, he gave me someone to care about. 
if we just care about ourselves, nothing will ever happen. You know, for it. it's not about us. So he gives us someone to pray for, someone to to petition for, and and as we press our petitions home until we get an answer. Pray until you get an answer. Pray until God hears your prayer. Pray according to the will of God. This was God's will that this woman stay have a pure life and, and not be taken advantage of. And God intervened and praise God, he that that situation ended. That poor poor man's ego got uh severely damaged and uh, he couldn't face her the same way praise god <laughs> amen all right you know ministry of healing says the world is sick and wherever the children of men, of men dwell suffering abounds on every hand there is a seeking for relief so in our world we have especially here in the united states they're suffering all around and you know people are crying out for relief from their sickness so we're going to use this opportunity now to pray for you know especially for seven day adventists you know that we will understand the importance of diet and lifestyle change and a return to god's eight laws of health new start nutrition exercise water sunlight uh, temperance air rest eight hours right and trust in divine power so i'm going to be praying this and elder david is going to be praying for the baptism of the holy spirit because as elder david said without the holy spirit we cannot do these things so let us uh, join us now as we see god in prayer dear heavenly father we thank you so much for this brand new day great is your faithfulness every morning to us lord we do not deserve but each day you wake us up and give us your blessings, the sunshine, the air, or the birds singing, sometimes green trees, vegetation that we can see, the, the, the bees going onto the flower. These are so beautiful and things that we thank you for. Lord, for our eyes to see and our ears to hear and for tasting and our senses intact, Lord, we give you thanks. We recognize you as the great creator, the magnificent savior. Lord, you are the omnipotent one. Even though you sit high on your throne, you come low, O oh God, to, to be interest, to find interest in the, the life of common men. Lord, you yourself even became a man. Jesus, the Son of God, came down, O oh God, to walk among men, to feel our suffering. Lord, and you know, even at this moment, even within our Seventh-day Adventist churches, there are many people who are suffering, oh God, with different diseases and sickness, Lord. And they're crying out to you, oh God, because they need relief. But Lord, because we have forsaken your eight laws of health, Lord, and the other health reform that you've spoken of through your, um, through divine providence, oh God, we, the spirit of prophecy, we neglect it, O oh God. I do pray, Lord, at this time that you will forgive us, Lord, cleanse us, O oh God, help us to return, O oh God, to the diet that you've uh, given in the Garden of Eden, Lord. Simple, simple diet, simple food, O oh God, as it passed through our digestive system, that it will be well to our organs, O oh God. And Lord, as you told us, O oh God, you know, just return to those eight laws of health, O oh God, to, you know, drink enough water. These are the things that, you know, that even Daniel um, and his three friends practiced, even though they were in a Eden land. So God, we pray for, for your Holy Spirit to really help us, O oh God, to have this diet and lifestyle change, O oh God, so that we can understand the times that we are living in so that when we read the Bible, we can comprehend to have clear minds, O oh God, and to prepare us, O oh God, to stand in the time. When Daniel passed the diet test, Lord, after 10 days, they were looking much better than, their, than the, the others who ate from the king's uh, table, the meat and the wine, Lord. And they were able to pass other tests, even like the golden image, O oh God. So, so it is, Lord, the coming crisis the last days, we will be able, if we pass this diet test now, Lord, we recognize that we will be able to stand the other tests that are coming our way, whatever they may be. We thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you will open the way for your people, 
O oh God, to return to the original diet. O oh God, to cast off the sugars and the fats and the things that are harmful for the body, O oh God. And I pray that your people will start watching programs, O oh God, uh, that will nourish and enrich their lives and bring them in a closer relationship with you. I pray that the books that they read will be uplifting, O oh God. I pray that they will return to devotion and have a life, a life that is closely connected with you so that you can speak morning and evening worship, O oh God. Lord, may your Holy Spirit do its full work, O oh God. We trust you and we thank you and we praise you for what you have done, for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I pray, just the reason why I'm praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that I worked at a cancer center and I realized that people know what's right often they know what they should be eating but they don't have the power to change and we need the baptism of the holy spirit so that our words have power and and so that the holy spirit can bring them under conviction and and to provide the power that they need to make those necessary changes it's not easy and what i realize is without the baptism of the holy spirit our words fall on deaf, deaf ears and so I've experienced what, what uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control of your, your appetite and your diet, what that does. This is not something that we can do in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Our self-indulgence is one of the most difficult things to overcome. And only the baptism, only the infilling of the Holy Spirit can overcome that. So that's why I'm praying uh, for what we're praying for. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Father in heaven, we recognize that without you, we can do nothing. That we were born under sin, yes. in bondage to sin, Lord. We, we are born selfish. We are born uh, seeking our own way. We were born in rebellion against God. We are born not with a will submitted to God, but a will that wants to do its own will. Our desire, our, our own selfish nature wants to go our own way. We want to satisfy our own self. We want to take care of ourselves instead of trusting in a loving God to take care of us. Mm -hmm. Lord, you created us. We are yours. We were created to be under your guidance and your authority and your direction, and you were to have control over our life and you gave us a free will to to happily obey you and to cooperate with your your laws and your ways but father in the beginning uh man separated his will from your will and we just from that day on lord we've been desiring desiring to do our own will and go our own way and, and please ourselves and gratify our own self and our own flesh. Father, there's no way we can overcome that desire um, by our own ability. Lord, only you can bring us to the point of bringing us back into allegiance with you, where our will is submitted to your will instead of going in a rebellious direction and going our own way and setting our own paths, setting our own ideas and, and our pleasing ourselves instead of pleasing you father i know <clears throat> that there is no happiness there is no contentment there is no fulfillment in a life of seeking our own pleasure and 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 seeking our own way and our own will so lord today i'm asking that as we present ourselves before you that that you would take our will as we yield our will to you lord we we ask that according to the way Christ taught us to pray, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your kingdom is where your will is carried out. Father, we submit our will under your authority because we realize that usurping uh, the, the ability to take care of ourselves and usurping uh, your authority over our life and taking authority for ourselves is death and will end up in destruction. <clears throat> you said all who sow to the flesh will reap destruction. 
Father, we just ask that you, we renounce the work of the flesh. We renounce our setting our will up to do our own will. Father, we yield our will to you so that you can work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father, I'm asking that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would become a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Lord, I just ask that, that you would subdue us to yourself, that you would win us, that we would see what you've done to save us, that we would love Jesus because he first loved us. Amen. Father, I just ask that the love of God would be shed abroad in our hearts. You said in Romans 5, 5, Lord, that hope does not disappoint, but the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which you've given us. That love, which is, has its source in your heart, Father, is, is not a, a plant of human origin. It is, does not come from us, Lord. It, we only get it from you. That love which seeketh not its own, is your love, and you offered it to us through the anointing and the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Father, we receive that today. We ask that you would fill us. We're asking that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would see Jesus in a new and living way, that we would see what he did for us on the cross when he made an end to sin and brought in everlasting righteousness. Father, I ask that you would, as we accept what Jesus did for us by, by offering us salvation whole and complete that we would work out that salvation with fear and trembling so that you can work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure we thank you for hearing our prayers father we thank you that we do not live by sight but we live by faith we're not here to trust in our own feelings whether we feel right or wrong we're here to trust in what jesus did for us we accept the cross as our death we accept the resurrection as our newness of life, being brought to newness of life. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us a new life in Christ Jesus today. We pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Think of this. Um, you're asleep at home in the night and you hear a knock on the door, probably at midnight. And outside is someone asking like please i need some bread for my children i'm hungry you probably want to call the police is the first thing but <laughs> just imagine that the holy spirit have has touched your heart and tell you that hey you probably need to give some food to this person begging but you probably a little bit skeptical and the person keep asking please please i need it and you're wondering mm. Lord, is it you or is it just my mind? <laughs> and you pray in your heart and you said, Lord, should I call the cops? <laughs> and then, you know, the Holy Spirit touch your heart. And because this person keeps asking and asking and asking, please, and begging you, you pray in your heart and then you get something and you give to them. You know, this is an example of someone who is prevailing. They keep asking about something. And that is our topic for today, prevailing prayer and if you are just joining us for the first time we're reading the book prior you can buy it online from our adventist bookstores you can also get it on uh, amazon you can also use your phone it's free you can go on google type in the word prior and elder david is showing you um, his copy um, prior it'll focus there yes. oh, yeah praise the lord for that and if you have, you can download it on the App Store, EGW Writings, and you can download the books and you can read it from there. So um, let's dive in and discuss. So Elder David, what is prevailing prior? Let's get a definition working for those uh, trying to understand. Well, it's like, it's like what I was talking about, praying until you get an answer, praying mm -hmm. until, and, and, uh, bringing your petitions before God and claiming the promises of God until you have a breakthrough. Um, yeah. it's, it's sometimes you can pray three or four times. Elijah had to pray seven times before yeah. he had a breakthrough. <laughs> yes. And Daniel prayed for three weeks before he had a breakthrough. So right. it's, there's no set limit of how long it takes to intercede and to pray. Some of us have been praying for our children for a long time. Uh, <laughs> some parents, 
prayed prayed for uh, for years, and then I know my parents prayed for me. I was I was out of the church for seven years or seven or eight years, and mm-hmm. just going my own way. And finally, God intervened and circum- brought circumstances around where He drew me back. So whatever time it takes, it's believing that God hears your prayers because of Jesus and that he will hear your prayer and he will answer it. Amen. Praise God. You know, Elder David, some people, they would say, um, it is lack of faith if I keep praying the same thing. So I should pray once, I believe, and it will happen. How would you respond to that? That's not biblical. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, ask and keep on asking. That the 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 tense of the Greek verb there is ask and keep on. It's a continual asking. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. That when Jesus taught them how to pray, he told of the woman who, well, the the man who went to his friend and asking for bread at midnight was one Mm -hmm. of them. And the other one was the, the, the lady who went to the unjust judge and Mm -hmm. she, she just kept asking and asking and asking for the judge to intervene in her case Finally, the judge says, well, because she's going to wear me out, I'm going to answer it. <laughs> yes. you know, so, so press your petitions to God until he changes your heart. First of all, he's going to test your sincerity. He's going to test to see if you really want. The, the, the longer you pray, the more intensely. See, he works in you. He's working with you. He puts the desire in your heart when it's something according to his will. And then he stirs up that desire. And the more you come to him, the more your prayers change you and make put you in an attitude to receive the blessing. Because a lot of times we're so selfish, we don't realize how selfish we are. The heart Mm -hmm. is deceitful and wicked, and who can know it? And Mm -hmm. we God needs to do a cleansing work in our heart in order that he can give us what we need and it will and it will bring glory to his name. Amen. You know, some people would say that, and I'm glad you brought it out a little bit there, but I'm just going to, you know, mention it a little bit more. Some people would say, well, God understands. He knows already. So why should I keep praying? Yeah, that, that's what I believe is a doctrine of demons. That's what the devil wants us to do, to ask one time and give up. Uh, the Bible says, that we should pray and not faint. That means pray and not give up. Jesus taught us that. So instead of going on on uh, uh, logic from the enemy, we need to go by the word of God. Mm-hmm. Those who are righteous live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you go to the word of God and you find out exactly what Jesus tells us to do. Mm-hmm. And when we act according to his will and when we claim his promises, uh, then we'll, we'll see results. Uh, yes. The Bible says uh, in Isaiah 55, it says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return without giving bread to the sower and food to, uh, and uh, seed to, uh, food to the eater, um, so shall my word be which proceeded forth from my mouth. It will not uh, return to me void without accomplishing that for which I sent it. So it's the word of God. When we return the word of God by claiming the promises, that's God will not allow his word to return to him void. But that doesn't mean that we don't have to continue to ask Mm -hmm. until God can get us to uh, build our faith and to um, bring us into, there there are conditions before the promises can be answered, right? And Mm -hmm. what he has to do, sometimes he needs to do some cleanup in our hearts. Uh, if we have odd against our brother and we bring our gift to the altar, it says we need to first make right with our brother before we bring our offering to, to God. So there are conditions by which we receive the promises. And that is we need to be right with everybody. We need to have not wounded and hurt people and, 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 and hold on to resentment, hold on to anger, hold on to bitterness. Those mm-hmm. things need to be gone. We need to surrender those to Jesus. You can bring those to Jesus and give those to him, and mm-hmm. he will give you a new heart. But yeah. those are the conditions for a prayer to be answered. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, God wants us to, to, to participate in prevailing prayer because the more we ask, the more earnestness is lodged in our lives. So that's one of the things. All right. So we're going to dig into chapter um, 
chapter eight, which says prevail in prayer. Um, you know, I, I, I just said that, but I just wanted to read the quote for you guys. It says the persistent asking brings the petitioner, that is we who are praying, into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the things for which he asks. So you'll be thinking, why should I keep praying? It's, isn't God able to hear the first time? Well, he wants us to be more earnest and he wants us to, you know, to awake that desire that whatever we're praying for. And I just wanted to point out that whatever problems or any things that beset you, that makes you weary, you can pray about it. Just whisper a word of prayer. There are times when there's something going on in my mind and I'm just like, I'm not at peace and I'm not very focused. And I'm like, Lord, what shall I do? And I'm trying to think of the solutions. And then the Lord just say, pray. So I just like whisper word of prayer and then the answer comes. And then my soul just, my, my soul is fattened with gladness. So I believe you can try the same thing. Yes. Uh, but many of us do not have living faith. So Jesus, understand this. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. Hmm. If, if your method of prayer is not working, tell Jesus about it. Jesus, why aren't my prayers being answered? Why don't I have that intimate connection with you? Do you think he wants to tell you that? Do you think he wants to show you? He wants you to be close to him. He wants you to have breakthroughs in your life. He wants you to see your prayers answered. So come to him just like that and tell him exactly, Lord, sometimes my prayers aren't answered. And, and, and not every prayer will be answered like we expect it to. But it says, but many of you have not living faith. This is why they do not see more of the power of God. Their weakness is a result of unbelief. They have more faith in their own working than in the working of God for them. Now, this is, this is something that's easy. This is built into our nature. Mm -hmm. When there's a problem, you got to fix it. You got to take care of it yourself. God helps those who help themselves. Now, that's not from the Bible, okay? <laughs> so there you have it increased faith sometimes our prayers are not answered because we just don't believe how how, right. how how much easy it is for us to believe like our boss when they said okay i'm going to give you a raise next week and you believe it right without asking anything but when we have so many trials and difficulties we don't exhibit that faith so i'm glad you brought that point out yes and let me just one more statement from that it says if we if we have more faith, we have more faith in our own working than in the working of God for them. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to clarify. They take themselves into their own keeping. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's what we all struggle with. We want, to take our, we want to control ourselves. We want to be in charge of ourselves, and we don't want the Spirit of God to be in charge of us. When we call Jesus Lord, that means that he's in charge of us. Mm -hmm. and, and very few people... Um, in today's society have Jesus as their Lord because they want to manage themselves. And these are the things that keep us from receiving and seeing the power of God released in our life and in answer to prayer. Amen. Praise God. It says if the savior of men, the son of God felt the need of prayer, how much more should feeble, sinful, mortals feel the necessity of fervent constant prayer brothers and sisters jesus himself prayed many times he would retreat to the mountainside and sometimes i don't know i like to go in nature and pray because i see things around me that impress my mind as i pray or just going in a closet to just shut out the distractions, turn your phone off, just get rid of all of those distractions and just pray to God. And one important thing is just the first thing you do when you wake up is just go into prayer, talk with God. It may seem simple, but I'm telling you, it does work. It really works. So try that. And before you go to bed at night, just spend some time praying before you go to bed. So never forget those two things. It helps. Amen. This, uh, it's telling us here some of the things that keep us from seeing the power of God. It says, says, we plan and devise, we make plans, but we pray little mm -hmm. and have little real trust in God. Mm -hmm. We think that we have faith, but it is only the impulse of the moment. 
failing. Okay, and here's the here's the answer. Now, here's the problem: is this failing to really realize our own need or God's willingness to give? They do not persevere in keeping their request before the Lord. So, first of all, we have to recognize our own need, and that's something. That's something as uh, the last church on earth, uh, the Laodicean church, which is the church that's living during the time of the judgment, because the <laughs> Laodicea, the word Laodicea means the people judged, right? Yes. They think they're rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing, but really they're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So that all of us who are part of that church, we have a tendency to not recognize how much, what, how much we need Jesus and how, what our true condition is. So as we come close to God, we will see more the truth about our own heart. We will see how, how desperately wicked it is, according to what the psalmist said, the, the heart is desperate and wicked. Who can know it, right? Mm. And uh, as we see that, we will rely more on God instead of relying on our own efforts and our own ability to, to do for ourselves. Amen. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. You know, he said, Jacob, I like this part. He said, Jacob, and we all know the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel. And, you know, sometimes at, at times we have to wrestle with God in our prayer. Our feeble prayers will not move the arm of God. I remember you sharing that part. But we, you know, let me read it. It says, Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and he was determined. The same thing for us today. His experience testifies to the power of importunate prayer. It is now that we are to learn this lesson of prevailing prayer, of un unyielding faith. The greatest victories to the church, note this, the greatest victories to the church of Christ or to the individual Christians are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth or the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chamber with God when earnest agonizing faith lays hold upon the mighty arm of God. Amen. You know, we, we trust in ourselves more than we should, and, and we need to realize the power of the Holy Spirit. If we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if the Spirit of Jesus fills us, He takes over our prayer life then you're not stuck trying to do in your own flesh and in your own strength what he would do in you if you would just let him. Last week, I was, uh, I was praying and somebody texted me mm -hmm. and, and asked for prayer. And it was like the burden of the Holy Spirit just took over me. And, and they're, they're, this person's need came up before me and I was just weeping and weeping and weeping. I mean, for minutes and minutes and minutes, I could not stop. Their condition came before me, and I just was pleading with God. I presented them before the Father. That is not my nature. I'm too selfish. I'm too busy doing my own thing. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And only He can give you that burden that will, that will cause your heart to just go out to God. Mm -hmm. Lord, you must save my friend. You must intervene. You must do this for your namesake, Lord. When the Holy Spirit takes over your prayer life, it will become meaningful and real. Let me just read this. Our prayers are to be in earnest, persistent, as was the petition of the needy friend who asked for the loaves at midnight. The more earnestly and steadfastly we ask, the closer will be our spiritual union with Christ. It is by receiving the Spirit of Christ, it's by entering in with Him in His intercession, where the Holy Spirit gives us burdens of people to pray for, and we bring it, it says, with groanings too deep for words. It's not something you can do yourself. This is not something you can work up on your own. This is something that happens when you draw close to, to Christ and are connected with him through, through his spirit. And he starts pouring out his desires. He puts his burdens on your heart, and then you bring him before him under the power of the Holy Spirit. It's all about Jesus, and it's all about his spirit, and it's a whole lot less about us than we would like to think. Amen. You know, you may be thinking, I cannot do medical missionary work. I'm not even a teacher. I am not very good with agriculture. But one thing we all can do as Christians is pray. Pray 
for the needs of your community. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your unsafe family members. Pray for God to change your heart. Pray for his will to be done in your life. Pray for a revival. Pray for a reformation. You can pray. And, and, and as you pray and you continue to pray, you will see you're drawn closer to Christ. And he will open the veil and reveal himself to you and reveal his will and lead you into the path that you should go. And I would encourage you guys, if you haven't done this yet, make a prior list starting right now. If you haven't had one, get a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, get a piece of paper. If you don't have paper, you can use the receipts that you get in Walmart. Anything, just make a, get a piece notes. of paper, <laughs> stick it or whatever. <laughs> it's just being funny. But start writing down, starting from like in your family, people that, you know, you want to pray for and just start and go and God will lead you. Lord's been convicting me to transform my closet into a prayer closet. <laughs> <laughs> and because, you know, Lynn, uh, Lynn uh, has a prayer closet and she has these sticky notes on the wall with these people and, and the promises. So God gives her a promise for each person and to claim for that person. Mm -hmm. So that gives you something to pray for, right? Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit gives you the promise, when he tells you what to pray for the person, you know it's his will. And, he, and the promise is, if you pray according to my will, you have the promise that you have the answer that you requested. So mm -hmm. press that petition and keep pressing it on until God intervenes and it's evident that God heard your prayer. Now, like mm -hmm. when I was praying for that, for that lady, mm -hmm. I prayed maybe three times, three or four times, and then mm -hmm. I just knew in my spirit, I knew God heard that prayer. Praise God. And then I just, I didn't have to keep praying. I didn't have to keep asking. Once I knew God heard that, once I knew he had that prayer and he got this, then I just wait and trust and I keep it before him. And I keep, uh, you know, not asking, but just saying, Lord, it's yours. You got this. Mm -hmm. And trusting in his power to intervene and just wait for him to do what he does best. He Amen. does he'll do it maybe completely different than you expect, but he's got it. I'm glad you brought that out because, you know, as Christians, one, you know, when you read Galatians chapter five and he talks about the fruit of the spirit, you know, patience is one of them. And I think in James chapter one, it talks about trials um, teaching us uh, patience. So as Christians, we want to, you know, we live in a fast paced society. That's why you have all these fast food restaurants. <laughs> so we want to go fast. But time and time again, we see, you know, those who wait upon the Lord. I think it's Isaiah 40 those who wait upon God will renew their strength. They will soar. You know, God is teaching us to, to, to wait. You know, sometimes we pray and we want to answer right away, but God is saying, wait, I'm going to give you, but you're not ready yet. So sometimes it may be that. And, you know, even after praying, you just wait and continue to claim the promise. He said somewhere here in the same chapter that talks about prevailing prayer, he said, after the prayer is made, if the answer is not realized immediately, do not weary of waiting and become unstable. Waver not, cling to the promise. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it, like the importunate widow that we talked about. Urge your case, being firm in your purpose. It is the object important enough. Is the object important enough great consequence to you? It certainly is. Then waver not, or your faith may be tried. If the thing you desire is valuable, it is worthy of a strong, earnest effort. You have the promise, watch and pray, be steadfast, and the prayer will be answered for is it not God who has promised? If it costs you something to obtain it, you will prize it the more when obtained. Mm -hmm. You are plainly told that if you waver, you need not think that you shall receive anything of the Lord. A caution is here given not to become weary, but to rest. Note this, rest firmly upon the promise. If you ask, he will give you the liberally and upbraid not so continue to trust god if you've been asking something if you are if you're a young person um praying about you know a future spouse 
continue to pray, continue to hope, don't waver. If you're a young man trying to go into probably buying a house and you're thinking about it, continue to pray about it and wait for it. If you're a family thinking of moving from the cities to the country, but you're, you're not sure about God's leading, continue to pray about it and leave your petition. You know, God will not turn us away empty, it says. And prayer brings the greatest victory. So I would say continue to pray and just leave, exercise that living faith in God. Put all your effort, all your energy. And where do you get this energy from? A plant-based diet. <laughs> yeah, yes. That was just being funny. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's where, you know, that doesn't take the place of waiting upon the Lord and renewing your strength, yeah. but I'll tell you what, living, having a, a good plant-based diet and getting good exercise does renew your strength too. Yes, and that's, uh, <clears throat> trusting in the Lord will, will bring us into alignment with all of his laws, both moral and physical, right? Praise God. Mm -hmm. We're running short on time. Let me share just one more here. Yes, and, and then these... I will do the closing prayer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, when these persons search the scriptures with prayer to know the express will of God and then do his will from the heart without one reservation or self-indulgence, they will find rest. All the agonizing, all the tears and struggles will not bring them into the blessing they long for. Mm -hmm. Self must be entirely surrendered. They must mm -hmm. do the work that presents itself, appropriate, appropriating the abundance of the grace of God, which is promised to all who ask him. <clears throat> so you can, you can do all this important prayer and stuff, but if you're not completely surrendered to God, mm -hmm. so what he's going to do, you're, you're going to pray. And, and as you pray, he's going to show you if there's anything in your heart that needs to be fixed first. Trust Amen. me. He's good like that, right? Amen. You don't have to figure everything out. You don't have to understand everything. You come to him in faith. Say, Lord, this is my request. If there's a problem, show me. If there's anything in my heart that I'm holding on to, expose that. Press in close to him. He understands our heart. He understands that we're made from dust. He understands that we are sinful, helpless, and dependent. So come to him, sinful, helpless, and dependent and ask that he will show you. He will not turn you away. Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will of no wise cast out. If you want to take that promise alone, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. You promise me, Lord, you will not cast me out. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know I'm messed up. I'm coming just as I am. I'm coming to be fixed. I'm coming to be transformed. I'm coming to be renewed and revived and restored into your image. And I know you won't turn me away. Praise God. Let us pray. God is good. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for today's uh, uh, presentation about prevailing prayer. I pray for your people, Lord, that you will teach them how to pray. Lord, help us, Lord, not to give up when we're praying about a topic. Lord, help us to trust you with all our energy, all our might, all our strength. Lord, teach us how to be patient and help us, O oh God, to surrender, as the hymn says, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Lord, take us, Lord, and help us, O oh God, to put our hand in yours as you begin this work of revival and reformation in our individual lives. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, God bless you until we meet next week. Keep faithful. And remember, if you have any prayer requests, send your prayer requests to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com. God bless you.